Well, hello everybody. Last month, Torchwood decided to end the world in an immersive escape room. This month, we're getting sent down a rather scary cave. As in today's Big Finish audio drama review, I'm going to be taking a look at the latest release as a part of the Big Finish Torchwood monthly range in the Hollow Choir, featuring the return of Kai Owen as Reese Williams. This release is available to order now on the Big Finish website on both physical CD and digital download, and once more, the cover art by Sean Longmore is really nice and incredibly spooky. Again, this was another release that I was really looking forward to. In fact, the Torture Monthly range is quickly becoming a highlight of each and every month, and this is another story that has lots of adrenaline behind it. It's quite an experience to listen to. I am, in fact, currently shaking off a bit of a cold at the minute, which is why I sound a bit clogged, but this story even managed to distract me from that, so that's quite impressive. So Reese Williams is on yet another solo mission. This takes him to a large cave network close to where he is staying with Gwen and Anwen on a little holiday. Isn't that nice? Well things are about to not get nice. There are stories of this cave which date back many years, so when there is a rock fall and some students are trapped inside, he wants to find out if there is any truth to these stories. Reese is branded as Special Ops, I think he has a little bit of a hunch that something is going on and Torchwood will have the answers, so his presence within this episode to start with is not particularly pleasing for those professionals around the cave at the time dealing with the emergency. This is Malcolm Devlin and Helen Marshall's debut with Big Finish, and they are so certainly making an entrance of this episode. If you like the more spooky, horror-focused Torchwoods, this story will absolutely be up your street. The whole format, the way it made me feel, in fact reminded me of the works of Stuart Pringle and Lauren Mooney, which to me is actually quite high praise, as their work is some of the most consistent and strong output, in my opinion, that Big Finish has had in quite a number of years. I just think both of them are excellent writers. In fact, if you listen to the January 2024 release from the Torture Monthly Range, Pop It, written by Stuart and Lauren, this episode reminded me of that. The Hollow Choir is a superb accompaniment to that story. And the general story setup is the same as well. We are plummeting Reese into a rather difficult situation. There are moments within this story which I really, really hated, which is a compliment, actually. Being set in a cave network, the characters must navigate small spaces and pull themselves through tight gaps. It's an incredibly claustrophobic story, and even without a four being directly present, the natural stakes already feel very high. It's a dangerous environment, and listening to this episode was certainly an adrenaline rush. And to add to the pressure, Reese and William must locate these students fast, otherwise the cave system will fill with water from the nearby sea, which really adds a sense of urgency to the plot, which isn't particularly that surprising. It's not much of a spoiler to say that they do indeed locate one of the students quite quickly, and from that point onwards you realise that this story perhaps isn't quite what it seems. There is something going on within this cave that isn't entirely human, or is it? Who knows? There's definitely an element of mystery to this story. But there has of course been a fall within the cave, there's material left, right and centre, rocks falling everywhere. It's a very dangerous environment, and again due to it being torchwood, it's not for a younger audience, and it really allows allows the writers to play with this a little bit. There is elements of body horror throughout the entirety of this story, which makes it quite grim at points, and when there is injury, there is more impact behind that injury, because ultimately with Torchwood, you can do more than you can with Doctor Who. When people feel pain, they can actually feel pain. Now whilst the script is incredibly strong, I do also really have to compliment Blair's musical score within this story, and Shin's sound design. Together they capture this brutally magical yet scary environment. Submersing someone underwater and then struggling to escape, I imagine, is a rather difficult task for audio, but in this episode it really works. There are ear-popping moments, echoes, hindrance to sound and vision for the main characters, so it's an incredibly versatile showcase of what audio can still achieve without a visual, which personally I found very impressive. One of the ways that I can symbolise my emotions and feelings throughout listening to this story is can can you remember way back in the early 2000s when I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here was actually good, and when watching the trials you thought I would absolutely hate to be in that situation? Well, throughout this story, I was thinking exactly that. What would I do in this situation? How would I feel stranded so far deep underground of absolutely nowhere to escape, except through these tiny little gaps that you don't actually know where they lead? It's really stressful. It's a really anxiety-increasing story, but to me that showed that I cared about the plot because I was thinking about these characters and what they were going through. 
And as the title suggests, there is a musical element to this story, and not in a Mary Poppins kind of way, as that would be very jarring. But instead, the way that sound is manipulated in the cave for William and Reese, it's incredibly hypnotic, but weirdly comforting, and also terrifying all at the same time when you dwell on it. The listener to the audio drama goes through a rather similar experience to the protagonists, when this sound is so consistent throughout the episode, it's always there, so it's somewhat just feels right come the end, and when the story finishes, the silence feels more silent, if that makes sense. Now this is something which I don't really touch upon much, but maybe it's overlooked. Having good headphones or earbuds is crucial for audio drama, and that doesn't have to mean expensive ones. The audio that they project just has to be not flat sounding, or tinny, even worse if they're tinny. I think that this can really make or break a story like this one, where you can hear the various levels of sound design from diegetic to non-diegetic. And I think that this is the difference from feeling like you're within the story's location and also feeling very detached from the story. I know that I've listened to episodes in the past with rather bad headphones, and this has completely ruined the experience without me even realising it, and I've actually been more critical of the story because of the headphones that I was using, because I felt less involved within the narrative. Now, William is a great character for Reese to bounce off. It's pretty much a two-hander, although there is a few other characters scattered about as well, and I like how unconventional this bonding exercise is that they embark upon within this episode. He is a professional climber, he knows the caves, except the Tremors have unearthed deeper levels within this cave which were previously inaccessible, and this is where Reese's expertise come in. William feels very real, haunted emotionally by his past decisions, which I think Reese allows for the character to dwell on those feelings a little bit more. Reese Williams too also has these struggles. I love how Malcolm and Helen address this. It's a very in-your-throat moment, as Reese kind of acknowledges is that he feels expendable a lot of the time. Gwen and Anne Wen have that mother and daughter bond, whilst Gwen obviously has that crucial Earth-defending role at Torchwood. So yes, it could probably be quite easy for Reese to feel just a little bit dull and ordinary. And precise moments like this is something that I wouldn't usually dwell upon within an episode review, but oddly, it's something that I wish to address, as it's so easy to overlook Reese to outsiders for Big Finish, and probably to regular Big Finish listeners as well. You may well look at a release like this, or any Reese Williams story, and think, why? Why do a story with him? He's just a random bloke. But Kai Owen's performance within Visiting Hours, Pop It, The Hollow Choir, and I imagine many other stories that he features within, deliver this wonderfully human approach to Torchwood-style dilemmas, which I think is often missing. Pop It and The Hollow Choir particularly have this locality to them, these little Welsh communities where this is their world and nothing else. Strong writing can develop any character, albeit how ordinary they are, and I think within this story, we get to experience that vulnerability with Reese but also acknowledging that, yes, he doesn't have this job within Torchwood directly, but he most certainly has an important role to play within life. We do live in such a busy world of content nowadays, and I think it is so easy to overlook the Torchwood main range, or, more particularly, stories like this, because of the character at the helm. And that's not me being rude to Reese as a character. I think, genuinely, if you had a solo story with Reese or a solo story with Owen Harper, the Owen Harper story is obviously going to sell more. And if you do overlook this story, or other episodes like this, then you're missing out. And it is one of the reasons why I continue to review this range each and every month, because its output is so rich with emotion, threat, enthralling narrative, and great character moments. It's not a range to be underestimated. And I do firmly believe that if the Tortured Main range was released in the earlier years of Big Finish, when there was less content being produced, and overall probably the vast majority of the Big Finish all audience were listening to probably over 90% of the output as things were generally more affordable and more accessible, I firmly believe that a lot of the Torchwood Monthly Range stories would have legendary status and be as highly recommended as the likes of Spare Parts, The Chimes of Midnight, the early range of the Eighth Doctor and Lucy Miller. It's just because there's so much content these days, episodes do get overlooked. The Hollow Choir is one of those stories which, as a listener, it makes you go, ooh, don't do that, or you end up holding your breath 
breath of the character as they dive underwater, or end up holding your breath generally throughout the vast majority of the scenes as they find themselves in claustrophobic places. It's a story you can feel involved with, although I definitely recommend not listening to this one if you want to calm down. If you want a distraction, then yes, definitely listen to this story. So The Hollow Choir is an impressive adrenaline rush of a debut story for writers Malcolm Devlin and Helen Marshall. Challenging practical sound design and music in bold, scary ways. It absolutely pays off and Kai Owen delivers another strong, heartfelt performance which allows us listeners to bond with the character a little bit more closely and his current life situation. Packed with intense claustrophobia, deep unknowns, eerie forces, it's a story of which that I couldn't help but hold my breath throughout. So there we go, that is another incredibly strong instalment of the Torchwood monthly range. Hopefully join me next month as I take a look at the next release, which I do believe is another eerie one. So I guess I will see you then.